So welcome back everyone. Today we're going to find out, is there a difference between a USA made Crescent Ranch at $35, a Chinese made Crescent Ranch at $5? So thanks for joining me. I think this is going to be a very interesting test and something that I have wondered for a long time. So Crescent Ranch, man, talk about a staple uh, in any man's toolbox. I mean, a must have tool. Every time you break out a Crescent Ranch in a video, there's always gonna be someone, maybe, I don't know what we call them, elitists that say you should never use a Crescent Wrench. Anyone who says that doesn't know what they're talking about. If, yes, of course, it's better to use a box-in wrench or a wrench that fits the nut, but the reality of it is, is if you're down in the field or you're packing tools to remote location or you have, want to have something in your truck that just does about everything and you don't want to pack 300 pounds of tool or tools around, a crescent wrench is actually a very interesting, a really, really a great choice and a must-have. One interesting fact that I just learned about these, the first crescent wrench was invented in right around 1917 by the Crescent Company. Of course, it's still by most of, you know, by most of us is referred to that to this day, even though it's a, an adjustable wrench and the Crescent was the brand name. Of course, the patent ran out years ago and there's a million different companies making them. Uh, another interesting fact, remember Charles Lindbergh, the first guy who flew across the, the Atlantic in an airplane? He took only a very few things with him because weight was so important. He took gas, water, a sandwich, a pair of pliers, and a crescent wrench. So <laughs> to give you an idea when he had to make hard choices on what tool to take, that's what he took. So we are going to test these to failure using the, I will break thee, my ultimate <laughs> cheater bar uh, that I have used to break a lot of tools is nothing more than a cut off drive shaft from a, a Jeep Wrangler. Uh, but man, it has made a very good cheater bar and it has broken a lot of tools. So we'll see which one's going to be tougher and can we adjust, can, can we justify the cost difference? Let's talk about that a little bit and come up and look at the fit and finish of these. I was absolutely staggered at the price difference between, well, this was actually really hard to find. This is an S&K 8-inch USA made crescent wrench. This was one of the only USA built crescent wrenches that I could find, and it was expensive. I mean, when you figure, I guess, expensive, that's all relative. We have all been accustomed to such values and, and inexpensive or cheap prices on, on these overseas tools that when we see an American-made tool, sometimes I mean, the sticker shock, uh, for me anyway, is um, you know, it's pretty tremendous. But so here we had it. I found it, an 8-inch crescent wrench on Amazon was $35, plus, that included shipping. Versus, you won't believe this, the cheapest one I could find, overseas produced, it's industrial though, this one doesn't say industrial. It was a three pack, $4.97. It was so cheap that it had to be an add-on item. I had to order something else to get it. I couldn't believe it. How can you produce a tool where you get three of them, a six, an eight, and a 10 for $4.95? I mean, I like to, I try to buy American whenever possible, but man, oh man, I mean, they don't make it easy for us sometimes, but we also, well, that's a whole nother video in itself. So let's take a look at the fit and finish here. So they're both eight inch crescent wrenches. If we open them to their extreme length here, I would imagine they're gonna be comparable. It's gonna be just over an inch. And of course they're exactly the same. We can see though that the S and K USA produced is, has, is more robust. It's a little bit thicker, it's definitely got a lot nicer coating on it. Rattle test. Hear that? They both rattle. But when we look close to these, we'll see that just the feel of it, you know, when you get a little grease and dirt in there, you're working outside, uh, those little things are the difference between being able to open it with one hand and not. I found some of these bind a little bit, but it's still a functional wrench. You know, it still works. It's just the tolerances are not as nice. The finishes are not as nice the robustness of the screw look at that i didn't even notice that big heavy robust screw on this one kind of a cheaper smaller screw on that this has an anti what is this oxy what do they call that black stuff kind of an anti-rust it just you know it does give you the fizz when you hold it i mean when i grab one of these american made and i have a couple of these I'm like ooh. That is a nice wrench that has a good feel to it it just has that thing that's hard to put into words where these uh, not so much but 35 dollars and well, I don't know, when you, $2, $1.75, uh, goodness, I mean, that is, uh, 
that's a huge difference. Another thing we're going to look for is how well do the surface ma surfaces made up here when we close it? Can we see sunshine or light between the jaws as they come together? And no, they actually I can't feel any visible deviations there. It's actually pretty good. And of course, let's see here, same. Tighten that up there. Nicely finished. Side to side movement a little bit right there. Yeah, you know, I don't know. It's 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 a huge gulf between the prices here. And for a guy putting together a budget toolkit, is it wise to spend $35 on a crescent wrench when you can have when there's other things you need? Uh, you're gonna have to decide on that. But let's take it over to the vice and see. I've got a couple tests set up that's gonna really push these probably to failure. So the foundation of our test is ye old snappy tom vise mounted on a fully welded steel bench bolted to the timbers. This is a formidable clamping system right here. I've yet to, even the I will break thee can't even move this whole system. All right, so what I've got here is I've got a piece of probably half inch flat bar here. And the first thing that I want to do is to test these things kind of torsionally like this. You know, these tools are not designed to work this way, but all of us, again, you know, anyone who says that they don't find themselves in these situations like this is a liar or a fraud or an elitist because you do what you have to do. Sometimes you can't get a crescent wrench in there. And I have on many accounts, put it over a bolt like this and use that with a cheater bar to do what I had to do. So let's see how much flex we get and kind of what happens. We're not gonna push them to breaking strength, but we're gonna put some, put the wood to them. So we won't be using I will break thee on there. We'll use this brother, I will bend thee. And that's the nice thing about the hole in the end there. Not only is it good for a pegboard, but it's good for a pry bar like this if you need to get something in a tight area. So we're not gonna go too far, but let's put some serious pressure on it and see what do we have there. We have the handle flexing. If I were to continue to push it, could I break it? It's definitely gonna break at the handle. I can feel that. I've got a lot of deflection right in there but I don't think that anything's going right there. The weak point, I would imagine, is gonna twist off and break right, right there. A lot of flex, really, really springy. Now, if we take the $35 S&K, S&K makes great tools. They, they're, you know, they're really kind of bridge the gap between Snap-on and the cheaper tools. My granddad, he was an economical guy, being an Oki living through the Depression, and they were always really popular with him. He, he just found it to be a, a good mix of value and quality with a great warranty. All right, so on the S and K, this is not a sponsored endorsement, by the way. These are all paid for by me. Okay, so here we go. So we're gonna do the same thing, put some pressure on it, and we have basically the same thing. The jaws feel really good. I think if, just judging from experience, if I were to push this, it's going to break probably in the same spot, but very strong. I don't think you have to worry about the jaws. I'd say both of those pass Chalked up in the vise here, we've got a nice five-sided, heavy, very hard steel snap-on punch. Now this will represent a bolt very well, and this is the biggest complaint you get from guys about the crescent wrenches, they round bolts off. And yes, they do have a tendency to do that, but a lot of that is because of user error and not using the tool correctly. Now, a crescent wrench is designed to be used one way, and that is this configuration clockwise. When you think about it, when you, when you come in, you tighten it back and forth until you take all the play out of it and you don't use the end of the jaws here. You don't come out here to the tip. That puts a lot of stress on it and you can already see it starting to flex and open up. You come as deep as you can. Not always an option, but whenever you can, come deep as you can and you turn it this way. By using the tool clockwise in this configuration, you're putting the stresses on the back, the meatier part of the tool. As I'm turning right here, I'm pushing on the strongest part of the tool versus here. Now, if I go this way, if I'm going counterclockwise, what it's doing is it's putting a lot of the pressure and strain on the smallest part of the tool, which is down inside in the adjustable mechanism. So come in, the proper way to do it is come in, tighten it, make sure you take the play out of it, and then you seat it as deep as you can and you're ready to go. Now we're ready for I will break thee. All right, so we'll put this on here. And what we're gonna be looking for is how the tool reacts under all of this load. And I'm just gonna have to gauge it by, by my think so and by my feel on which one seems to wanna to hold the best before it slips off. Here we go. Now, because we're using a hardened steel punch, it's probably not going to mar. It's going to be the wrench that's going to mar. But I'm gonna start pulling on this. And we can see I'm putting very moderate pressure, not very heavy. 
will the wrench be strong enough to hold as it goes over the ridge of that? Now I'm putting quite a bit more pressure on it, probably 60 pounds if I were to guess, and it's breaking over. All right, so did it break? Oh, it didn't do it any good. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Let's take a closer look here. Our test may be coming to a rapid conclusion right here. Okay, so a good wrench should be able to handle that without completely failing, but that something didn't, it's not working anymore. Something skipped or broke inside. Sometimes, I've ran into this before, you can take a brass hammer, you can give it a little bit of, a little bit of jarring, get things lined up again and get it to, get it to go again. Same thing, we'll come in, Tighten, take the play out of it right there. Definitely a, certainly a superior tool. Will it survive the test here? Does it hold tighter? I'm gonna to have to just kind of go off feel there, but so I'll start to pull here. Definitely getting harder. It's certainly, it's, yeah, it's, I'm pulling harder than I did with the other one. It's holding the edge better. Actually, it's really hard. Really pulling hard now, probably over well over 100 pounds. Oh, oh goodness, something gave. Oh, something gave. What gave? Did something break? Well, still working. Well, we need to go the whole way there. I thought that something broke inside. It didn't sound good though, did it? We need to go the whole way, like we did with the with the Chinese wrench. All right, let's try that one more time. A lot of pressure on that. Oh. oh, goodness, look at that. Did that turn it in the vise? Surely not. Did that turn? I had that thing clamped down as tight as I could get it. Wow, that's been pretty impressive. I was not expecting that. I'll have to go back and look at that footage, but I think it twisted it inside of the vise. That's one of the first tools I will break that he wasn't able to break. Okay, so I think we exerted, I exerted a lot more force on it than I did with the Chinese one. And feeling here a whole lot less. I can feel a little bit of, little bit of maybe something. No, it's not, not really. That's actually, it was a much better steel. Uh, than the than the other one. I don't feel it's not really dented or deformed. Actually, I think it's it doesn't deformed at all. I think it just feel a little few tool marks in there.